Everybody's scared of something, whether it's the dark, what lives in the dark, or what comes out of the dark. Everybody's scared of something. I'm scary as forever, and let's see what you're scared of. The story contains blood and is not intended for children. If you don't know what dementia is, I'll give you a quick example. You can lose your memory, you can go insane, and sometimes you can't tell the difference between what's real and what's not. My Aunt Lisa has dementia, or at least we thought she did. Listen, I can handle a six-year-old woman. Free. N n free! I can handle it. Now I gotta go. I'm already here. Okay. Bye. I hang up with my best friend, the only one worried about me babysitting my Aunt Lisa. That's what I loved about her from the first moment I met her, that she always cared. I put my phone in my pocket as I walk up to the old falling apart steps. I reach for the door and hear a noise coming from inside. Before knocking, I put my ear against the door to listen. It sounds like claws scratching on the floor right behind the door. Then, just as I'm about to reach for the knob, it stops. I stand there for a second, then open the door. I bend down and see nothing. No scratch marks or anything. I look up into the hallway and I see something moving in the room I'm going to be staying in. I see it getting closer and closer when... Hi, dear. How are you? I jump a little and look over to see my Aunt Lisa sitting in her chair. I stand up and close the door, making sure to lock it behind me. I slowly walk over to her. Hi, Aunt Lisa. How, how are you? I gently sit on the couch next to her. Ah, you mean how is my dementia, don't you, dear? No, no, no. I mean, how are you? She looks away from her knitting and gives me a look. Shiloh, dear, I know how you are. I know you don't want to be here. That your mom forced you. I try to act as genuine as I can. I put my hand on her shoulder. No, I- Listen! I may be older than you, but I'm not- I'm, I'm not an idiot. She looks around and sighs. She starts to look at the ground. I remove my hand from her shoulder awkwardly. I look away from her and to the TV. She starts knitting again, and we just sit there, not talking for the rest of the time. Sometime later, the light stops shining through the curtains. I look up from my phone and make a 180, moving the curtains enough to see out the window. I see the night closing in. I look back at my phone and check the time. 6.12. 6.12? I say out loud. I look back up at the TV. We really sat here for two hours without saying a word to each other, I think to myself. Oh, I have to eat some dinner. Shiloh, dear, would you please make me some soup? I give a fake smile and stand up from the couch. I sigh deeply and walk into the kitchen. She goes back to knitting as I round the corner. I open one of the cabinets and see nothing. I mean nothing. There is no food. I open all of them and there is nothing in any of them. I open the last one and nothing. I slam it and lean on the counter. So many things go through my head. How, how has she been eating? Has she been eating? Maybe she just had the last thing and forgot to ask for more. My brain races as I realize I have to go back out there and talk with her again. I take a breath and walk into the living room, bracing myself for another fight. I turn the corner and stop. I see her. She's looking next to me, but she looks terrified. I pick up the pace and bend down next to her. Aunt Lisa, are, are you okay? She doesn't answer me and continues to look behind me. Aunt Lisa! Her head jolts to look at me. I stumble back on the floor, pushing myself away from her. She looks away from me and back at where she was looking before. I look around and see nothing. I turn back to her and she's looking at me now. Sh Shiloh? She calls out in a low voice. Y yes? I say scared half to death. She closes her eyes and takes a breath. I slowly stand up, making sure to be as silent as possible. I stand there. She opens her eyes and looks back at me. They- they were there! I slowly walk over to her. Uh, who- who was there? The demons! The one who prey upon helpless people! I stand there, dead in my tracks. Those words shook me. No, 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 that's just- you're confusing real life with fake life, Aunt Lisa. No, it's not! I know what's real and what's not! I stand there regretting the moment I ever said yes to do this. She takes a breath and starts knitting again. You know where you're staying? I nod. Do you? I get tense. Yes! I 
across my arms. God, that's why your mother didn't like you. You weren't outgoing and fun like your sisters. No, instead you played in a corner with yourself, the shy little girl you are. Your mom must have had a sixth sense when she named you Shiloh. I look back at her, about to blow up, but stop myself. Unlock the door and stand on the porch. I stand there for a second and take a deep breath. I shake out of my trance and walk over to my car. I take out my keys from my coat pocket and push the trunk button. The trunk pops open with a click. I grab my bag and close the trunk. I enter the house. I walk past her as fast as possible, trying to avoid having a conversation. I drop my bag on the dusty old bed and close the door. I sit down on the bed. I bounce up and down, seeing if it's comfortable. Nah. I stand up and take off my coat. The freezing air makes all the hairs on my arms stand up, one by one. I gently put my coat on my bed and open my bag. I grab a little light pink sweater and put it on. It forbids the cold air off my arms and I'm warm again. I sit back on the bed and smile. Hmm. Hold me. I grab my coat and reach for my phone in one of the pockets. Wh what? I look and see no phone. Oh no, I must have left it in the kitchen. I sigh and get ready to get up. I stand up and open the door and walk slowly down the tiny hall. She's knitting while watching TV. I turn the corner into the kitchen and see my phone nowhere. I take a step back and sadly she saw me. Looking for this? I drop my head and turn to see her holding my phone. I didn't take it if that's what you're thinking. You left it here. I walk over to her. Oh, that's funny. Could have sworn I brought it in the kitchen with me. She starts to hold the phone out for me. I walk over to her and stand there for a second. Well, you didn't. I take it from her hands and without another word, she goes back to knitting. I roll my eyes and turn to walk away. I'm about to go down the hall, but can you make me that soup now? She says it in a demanding and mean voice. It makes me feel like I'm worthless. I have no meaning. I turn and walk into the kitchen. You have no food. I open one of the cabinets, and there it is. Food. Food? How did it? How did food get here? Under ten minutes. I stand there looking at the food. What was that? Once again, in that I know everything voice, I grab a can and open the drawer to find the can opener right there. I set the soup down on the table. I lift the tabletop up, and it's perfectly her height. I set the spoon down and walk away. I enter my room and close the door. I sit on the bed and make sure I have my phone this time. I do. I shut the light off and lay back on the bed and watch Netflix on my phone. I wake to the sound of scratching. I lift my phone up and shake it. The flashlight comes on. I climb from the nice cozy bed and approach the door. I slowly reach for the handle and grab it. The scratching stops. I grip the handle and brace myself. I swing the door open to see nothing. I look down and there it is. I don't even know what it is. It's gray, the skin is gray, the eyes are black, the hands are red, soaked with blood. I feel as if I might throw up right there. The thing turns and runs down the hallway. I look around and see a baseball bat in the corner of the room. I run and pick it up, throwing my phone on the bed. I walk out of the room and slowly walk down the hall. I hear all types of chewing noises. I once again brace myself for the worst and turn the corner. There it is. The body of my Aunt Lisa laying there as her legs get eaten off her body by those things. I gag and stumble back, dropping the bat. It hits the ground with a thud and draws things' attention. They look at me, black eyes looking deep into my soul. I can feel it. I'm gonna die here. In this house I didn't even want to go to. I sob as those things approach me. I brace myself for death and my Aunt Lisa moves. I watch and she sits up. Shy. Shiloh, you, you didn't do this. Remember! She redraws the thing's attention. They run over to her and I can hear the screams as they begin to eat her alive. Red and blue lights flash outside and the door opens. Cops enter the house and I watch as the things disappear. They, they say I did it. <laughs> Me. I witnessed it. I didn't do it. She said so herself, but they, they say she called them.
and said I was going to kill her, but she probably did that to get them there fast. I didn't do it, please. I'm writing out the report right now, right here. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy.